I think I'm signed out of Twitter anyway. Anyway, if you're here, hi, welcome to Life Coding. Today, we're going to continue on working on our migration, is the word that I'm looking for, from Raza 1.10. I don't remember the subversion number. I think it was 6, maybe? 1.10.6? Don't quote me on that. To our... So I'm just getting uh, all the chats up, which is a trial. Um, also, if you hear any squeaking sounds or, uh, I don't know, like um, thunks or clatters, it's, it's my dog. We gave him a new toy and he is having a jolly time and I apologize for the noise pollution. All right, all right, stream health is good, fantastic, love to see it. Why can't I see the Twitch chat? Yeah. Uh. Well, if you're on the Twitch chat, I'm sorry. I can't figure out how to see it. And that's, that's where I am right now. Uh, great. YouTube's giving me a lot of notifications I don't need right now. Coffee. Actually, it's not coffee. It's tea. <laughs> it's in a mug that says coffee, which is, uh, um, it was not intentional. So, um, what I've done since last time, I've changed exactly one thing because I was answering a forum question for somebody. Uh, and somebody asked, if you train a model multiple times, is it always going to give you exactly the same model? And the answer is no, it will not uh, because these are a, um, uh, the models are randomly initialized. So if you want to make sure that you always get the exact same model, model, you should set for every policy that has a stochastic component, this random seed argument, which is passed to TensorFlow, which makes sure that the model is initialized with the same random seed. And because you, um, and also the test train split is done with the same, I think that's for test train as well. I was, I spent quite a while poking around the code base. I'm pretty sure it affects both the test train split and the model initialization. Um, the normalization policy doesn't need one, and the rule policy it doesn't need one because those are both uh, deterministic. Uh, hello, good morning. It seems that winter has started. Um, it's I'd say it's still fall. Winter is what December twenty first, the first day of winter in the northern hemisphere, which I realize not everyone is in. Uh, and my dog is somewhere. You'll hear him probably. Um. Uh, Faisa says, can't wait for the form action, uh, specifically the action ask slot name. Uh, and Robbie also drinks chai. Yeah, tea is, tea is good. Usually I need coffee, but this morning I'm doing okay. It's not pretty good. So that's what I've changed since last time. Uh, and today we're going to be working on, wow, I really wish I could see, uh, really wish I could see the Twitch chat. Let me see if I can do something else to, to see it. I just don't like to ignore folks, you know? And if I just like can't see what folks are saying, that's awful. Don't like that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I see all of the chats maybe? Is that an option? Hmm? All right, okay, yes. I think this is the Twitch chat that I am seeing. Um, if somebody's watching on Twitch, if you could just say something, uh, I'll, I'll let you know if I see it. So, um, the assistant that we're working on is a dialect quiz bot. It's similar to the New York Times uh, dialect quiz. There we go. Where you're asked a bunch of questions about how you say things. And then when you finish the quiz, uh, we uh, let you know where in the US people speak most like that, however it is. Um, and the... Uh, data for this was provided by Bert Box. It was part of the Harvard Dialect Study. So thank you very much, Bert. Uh, Jaren says, uh, I'm from Amsterdam. Ah, uh, Vincent is in Amsterdam. I don't know if you know him. He's one of our, uh, he does all the, the algorithm whiteboard videos and he's got the Breakout Bot series. Um, and series three is airing this week. So we're doing one episode a day. Um, and if you haven't watched part one or part two, you could you could jump in with um, the third one if you wanted. It's fun. It's like, um, uh, what would you call it? You ever played like Monkey Island or any of those like early text-based adventure games? It's like that, but with Raza. 
We should really put game development somewhere in those video descriptions or titles just so people have a better idea of what to expect. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, and Fraser says, hear me in the, uh, uh, Twitch chat. So I'm seeing it. Thank you so much. Yes. The day forms. So the way that we're collecting the answers for this quiz are using these things called forms that were previously in, um, Raza, the SDK. So the big change, I mean, there's several big changes. Um, the, the biggest change between Raza 1.x and 2.x is that now we have um, anything that determines sort of the pattern that you want a conversation to, to take is under a, um, a new thing called, called rules. Um, so we came up with this based on a lot of community feedback, a lot of feedback from our uh, enterprise customers on like, features that they wanted and they needed to, to really make sure that their, uh, their work to work well. Um, so your forms, so we're going to ask a bunch of these questions in order your, um, your stories. Here's the things that I want to be able to do. Um, if you just want to have a rule that like every time somebody enters an email, you verify their email and you repeat it back to them or like, is this correct? And you want to make sure that you do that every single time. Um, anything like that, all of those go in this new section called rules. Uh, and for forms specifically, if you're not doing weird data validation, if you're just doing basic slot filling, it's a lot more lightweight because you don't have to have an action server to do that. For what we're doing, we're still going to need an action server because our data validation is good. <laughs> it works. It does what we want it to do, which is great. Um, but it is going to be quite a bit of uh, work to get that up and running. I'm assuming I haven't done it yet, obviously. Um, and then the form part of it, which says which questions we need to ask in what order, is going to go in rules. So, ba -ba -ba, let me just pull up the the form part. So I'm on the um, on this uh, migration guide from the website, uh, and we've already done. Uh, it's a little small. I'll zoom in a tiny bit. And we've already done quite a bit of this. So we've gone ahead and we've uh, converted our config file. We've converted our um, uh, data, our training data, <laughs> uh, from Markdown to YAML. That's another change, um, which is, there's just been, we put a lot of thought into it. Let me put it that way. And there's a whole big forum thread if you want to go through and, um, sort of go through the process of us talking about it with our community. Uh, 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 uh says, please show us the action ask slot name when the question comes from question action. Uh, Oh, ask for the name of the slot. Ugh, we're not really going to show that in this particular assistant because the question text, we don't want to have the slot name in. Um, but yeah. Uh, so it says, I have a question. Um, I'm currently using Raza 1.x. Uh, while training, it gets killed. No error. Hmm. No error? It could just be running for a while. Um, depending on your specific model setup, if you're doing a lot of training, um, it could possibly be that it's just taking a while to, to actually run through and do the training. Are you seeing the, the TQDM little like epochs, 10, 20 sort of, sort of updates as it's going? Um, Da, da, da. Sabat says the rule policy under config.yaml is the uh, default, right? I believe the default is it being under rules.yaml. So, um, and I think I mentioned this before, this is the first assistant that I'm migrating uh, and uh, we're going to learn together. And that's the whole point of the stream. So thanks for tuning in. I'm going to uh, da, 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 intents from the domain. Right, and I'm pretty sure the domain file is now uh, okay. So we can remove previously mops and intent ask his bots triggers act as well. Okay, so this is the the mapping policy, which is how you previously did rules. I don't think we're using any mapping, um, and I don't think that because in our in our config file we weren't using that as a as a policy. So I think we are good to just ignore that bit um, in our rules.yaml. Uh, 
triggers intense ASCII as bot, the rule policy in your model configuration, fallback policy, um, which I don't think we had one. I think we we're just using the default fallback policy, which is built in. Da, da, da. And then a config policies and pipelines. In addition, you need to add a rule to specify when you have. So if you wanted, um, we had some questions on the stream a while ago about um, multi-stage fallback policies. Um, that would be here in rules now. Uh, migrating two-stage fallback policy, which we were not using previously. So I'm just going through and, and seeing, ah, here we go, forms. So this is what we're going to be working on today. Uh, uh, Faisa says, uh, what's confusing me is the Reza 2.0 documentation were there before you uh, announced Reza 2.0. So they were there when we announced the um, release candidate versions. So uh, before we did the full official release, which I, th I think was last Friday, um, we had gone through several release candidates that we, you know, people were free to download and play with and we announced. Um, and we got a lot of feedback from that, but we wanted to make sure that people who were who were using the release candidates were able to, you know, have good documentation. And also, we were updating the documentation and working in in feedback. Uh, there was a lot of work going on behind the scenes. Uh, everyone everyone put in a lot of effort. Um, so yeah, and we we also didn't want to launch without the talks. <laughs> that would be uh, just a frustrating experience for everybody. Not really the the sort of you know delight for developer experience. We're looking to to nurture here at Raza. So yeah. Uh, all right. Someone says it shows the epochs as well as the approximation. One hour fifty minutes around forty five percent. It just shuts off. Hmm. Could be a TensorFlow error. Could be an out of memory error, possibly. Um, yeah, I would post about that in the forums uh, and see if you can you can get some more help there. It's it's a little bit hard to say with um, just what you've you've mentioned here. If you're doing if you're training in a virtual machine, maybe try giving the virtual machine more memory. You could be out of RAM. Possibly, I don't know. <laughs> Again, it's hard to say. Lots of variables. Oh, and Greg says you could be running out of memory. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, I just saw that, Greg. Um, Philippe says, Rosa takes more time to store the conversations in MongoDB on server than it takes in local. Uh, what could be the reason? Uh, oof, I don't know. It would depend on the differences between your server and your local setup. I, I would also ask on the on the forums and um, we have a forum post of asking good questions that might be helpful. So I'd, I'd list sort of like your you know, hardware specs for your server and your um, thing. All right, and it looks like uh, Stallone will check out adding more memory. Yeah, good luck. Uh, it sounds like uh, two hours, you got a pretty pretty hefty uh, uh, pipeline. NLU and pipeline. It sounds like you've got a lot of training to do, so definitely frustrating if it stops in the middle. All right, so uh, form action, no longer have one of those. We currently have one of these in our assistant here. Okay, good, and I was just checking our, um, it's behind me. One sec. I did actually do the thing that I kept saying I was going to do. Oh, there it is. Um, so I was just checking uh, behind me to make sure that I was using the, oh, you can't see my mouse, um, the conda environment. So down here in the bottom left, that one, that corner. Um, you can see my, my conda environment. So I am in my migration environment. Nope, that's my git branch. That's my git branch. What environment am I in? Uh, is it list? I can never remember. Nope, uh, beans, that's everything that's currently in my current environment. Let me double check. This could be ER. Okay, excellent, yes, okay. We're doing good. I just wanna make sure that I'm in my right, uh, the right environment that has 2.0 in it, otherwise we're gonna have uh, difficult problems. So we do have in our current doop -doop 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 -doop. Nope, nope, nope. I think it's under actions. Yeah, there we go. So in our current actions file, you can see that we do have, we have a submit action. We have a really, um, you know, it's not that big. Thinking about how, how many, how, like there are much bigger assistants, but for me, I think this is fairly big. Uh, but we got a pretty, pretty hefty um, 
this is our slot mappings. We have a pretty hefty um, answers database and then validation um, section. And then the slot mappings and the required slots uh, as this part of this form action, I think we are all going to take out and put that into rules. We don't have rules right now. Philippe says above is the link. I, I do not see a link. I'm sorry to say. Um, Sabat <laughs> says I created live coding uh, like you with the Indonesian, but no one is watching. Uh, did, you, did you post about it on the forums? Um, Maybe post about it on Twitter and uh, tag Raza HQ so we can retweet it and, and some more folks can hear about it. Because that sounds fun. If I if I spoke Indonesian, I would definitely turn in tune in. Yes. Where is my window? There it is. It was behind another one. Well, maybe I should have had coffee and not tea. All right, blah, 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 blah. No longer implemented using a form action, but instead defined in the domain. Any actions around requesting slots or slot validation can be handled with a form validation action. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, what was it called? Form validation action, copy. I'm gonna change the class, there we go. Um, validating our form input using multiple choice answers from Harvard dialect study. All right, there we go. Uh, so the required slots and the slot mappings are both gonna be covered in the form instead. The validation bit is going to stay in this validation action. And because I'm validating my answers in an action, I am going to need to run my create validation function. Yeah, I'm doing a little meta programming here. It's, it works. Listen, <laughs> it may be hacky, but it do what I want it to. So I'm fine with it. All right. And then, of course, the, um, the machine learning classifier we're using to take in the answers and then say, ah, this is where you're from, uh, is also going to be running in the actions.py. So we do need an action server, but we can move the bulk of our things into the uh, do -do -do -do. Yep, yep, yep. Here's what we have in the rule policy. All right, so I don't have do, have I already added the rule policy? I don't remember. Let's check our config. Actually, before I do anything, uh, form action placeholder. Right. I'm just going to make sure I have saved a copy of, uh, uh, I just want to make sure that I have saved a copy of all the text so I don't have to retype it. Uh, all right. And I, I could always go back to a previous Git version, but I don't especially care to. All right, in the config file, we need to add rule policy. I don't remember if we did that reason. Oh, we already did it. Okay, next step. Uh, then you need to define the form, required slots and their slot mappings in the domain as described in the documentation on form. So I'm gonna pop that open in a new tab. All right, D defining a form. That's exactly what I want, thank you. So forms, the name of the form, the slot that we're filling, type from entity, entity cuisine. Once the form action gets called for the first time, the form gets activated and will prompt the user for the next required slot value. It does this by looking for a response called utter ask form name slot name or utter ask slot name. If the former isn't found, make sure if the former isn't found. Okay, so if you have multiple forms, you wanna make sure that you include the form name. Um, and if you only have one form, it would be okay to just have the slot name. Make sure to define these responses in your defined domain file for each required slot. So we have done that. So we're gonna go into our domain. All right. Domain.yaml, excellent. So we have a lot of stuff in here. We have our session config, um, our intents, uh, and for this particular form, all of the intents are gonna be in form. Uh, and then we have all of our entities. 
And then we have all of our slots, which we updated last time. And also we updated and then retrained the model and that's what made the error message go away uh, right at the end of, of last session. Uh, and then our responses. And I'm gonna put the form down here. Okay. Oh, excuse me, my phone is making sounds. I ordered pizza last night, so I had to have my phone on. Uh, elicitation form. And then here are the things that we need in our elicitation form. And I'm just gonna, I think I still have it, yep. I'm just gonna post it here. And it needs to look like slot type entity and I'm going to assume that we can also do the inform bit here. That sounds right, right? So I think what I can do is actually use some clever regexes and make my life a little bit easier. Um, Faisa says, on Twitch, there's a documentation of how we can ask questions from custom actions, uh, not from utter ask slot name, and has never worked in the form that said it only works in 2.0. Uh, aren't you going to show us? I just, it's not something I have in this assistant. Um, it might be a good thing to add to the tutorials. Uh, ask questions from a custom ask. Ask form use from custom action tutorial. Um, I do have, I know that I take a lot of notes when people ask for tutorials. I have a whole big list um, and I'll slowly make my way through them. It takes so long to make a tutorial video, y'all. It takes like two solid weeks to make a tutorial video. Um, so I just wanna make sure that we're prioritizing things that are, are urgent and important. Uh, Faisa says, I'll watch but I don't know Indonesian. Hey, you might be able to get like some mileage out of uh, uh, auto captions. Or like if you're just watching somebody write code and you can sort of like figure out what they're trying to do. If you have like a suggestion, you could just use the code. Because code is built on English as the base language on account of Eurocentrism. Sorry. Okay, so. It's got to look like forms, restaurant form, blah, 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 like so. Um, so, sorry, I'm just like making random, random noises. Uh, like I said, I think I can make this a little bit easier for myself using some fancy regular expressions, or at least some copy paste, let's see. I told you to make zero sounds, buddy. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bop all of these over and I'm just using shift tab to uh, scooch them back towards the margin. Shift tab, shift tab. Okay, I think I'm gonna keep it from there. Okay, so looking at this, the first thing I want to do is I want to remove the uh, quotes everywhere because in the action they need to be defined as a string and YAML everything's a string. So we can get rid of that and let's just get some more information. Uh, uh, can I say I only want it in... Okay, I don't want to do it in my whole form because, uh, in my whole file, because it's going to uh, ruin my utterances. Okay, and we're gonna have to do a little bit of reformatting as well. Um, if the validation process for, this is from uh, Greg, who uh, is, Customer success engineer? I'm fairly sure that's Craig's title uh, at, at Raza. Uh, if the validation process is the same for slot across all forms, you can create one validate and then the, the name of the slot. Uh, that's good to know. 
can the domain file be updated like the data? Yeah, that would have saved me a lot of time. Uh, so the domain file was, I believe, updated, but no, we did it by hand. I mean, there's going to be so many different things in the domain file that I don't think that it's necessarily going to be straightforward to automate updating. You know what I mean? All right. And then... <laughs> Um, so I think we can actually replace all of this. So I'm looking at this in another, in another tab. So near, now we need to have type from entity, right? Um, do any of our slots? Yeah. Okay. I was going to be like, do any of our slots have, um, non- a through Z characters in them, and they do. They have underscores. So we want to replace this bit on all of them with type from entity, and we don't need to specify what the entity is because that's uh, redundant. It is also talked about there. So. Uh, I, uh, beans, because it's got characters that are special characters, what is it, backslash to escape? Is it two backslashes to escape? Okay, it's just one backslash to escape. Sorry, two backslashes to escape is, I'm pretty sure, invalid escape. Oh, it's because of the the line change, maybe? All right, what escape is invalid? Okay, uh, in that case, I think the more helpful thing might be not to use regular expressions. And just replace everything and then just get rid of this. Um, so it needs to be type from underscore entity, E-N-T-I-T-Y. All right. Oop. And then we're going to have, ow, oh, beans. Should have included a new line. That's OK. And I believe it has to be indented as well. All right. And now I can use regular expressions. And I think I should be good. So n t t e n t i t y and then we're gonna have a capture group and then duh and that'll be <laughs> all right first of all it should be a regular expression um should be brackets uh, but said, I hope I didn't much, miss much. Nope, you didn't. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to remove um, anything that happens after from underscore entity. And then user regular expressions, yes. Okay, and it says no results. Gotcha. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Okay, and then we only want to replace. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right, and then we only want to capture this bit. Is that right? Uh, no results. What flavor of regex do they use in VS Code? VS Code regex. Um, also, this is another thing that's on the list of uh, tutorial recommendations as regular expressions. VS Code regex capture group. Can you find a reference to a capture group and find a place? Uh, old method
Wait, yeah, no, I would prefer to see just the answer. Okay. Uh, do, do, do. Surround with the display capture with dollar sign one. Uh, yeah, as of 2020. Okay, so can we do dollar sign one here? No results. Mm. Is this in the command line or is this in their find and replace? All right, what did this person say? Search replace to F1, finding and replacing text using regular expressions in BX. All right. Uh, 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 help. Great, okay, so that's opened a website. Uh, Keyboard shortcuts, intro videos, settings, languages, setup. I'm gonna pull this over so y'all can see what I'm looking at. And I'll make it a little bit bigger. Yep, I got the notification about updating. I don't want to right now. <laughs> I'm in the middle of something. Getting started, user guide, basic editing. Uh, languages. Individual language stuff. Great. Fantastic. I don't downvote Stack Overflow answers, but. Real helpful. Uh, okay. Um. Curly brackets. Unquantifier brackets. At some point, it's just going to be quicker to go through and delete all the trailing text by hand. All right, you should replace da, 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 dot plus. Dollar sign one. With group name. Let's ask me about what we want to do. Find and replace. Yeah. Why is, so what I don't understand is why these two things look so different. We're all on a dingus. All we want to do is replace this with just from entity. Ah, nope. Okay, so this is matching everything. And this says, um, after from entity, uh, before the comma, get me everything that is um, a character from A to Z or an underscore and occurs at least one time. And we just want to replace that with from entity. Why was that so, di Why was that so difficult? Wow, we. There we go. Okay, fantastic. Uh, and then I'm just going to do this. I'm going to take off your expressions. Da, 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 da. And then slash n. Is that the right direction? Slash n. 
Nope, sure ain't. Oh, I bet I just type. I just, bet I just type like a, yeah, okay. Fantastic. And then is it under? Wow. Uh, good news. I'm doing great. There we go. Much easier. Okay. Um, how much time is this saving us, you're wondering? Some. Uh, oh, Marco, sorry. I just saw all of your comments. Uh, yeah, okay. So it would be try from entity in parentheses dollar sign one star. Gotcha. Okay. Helpful. I have not uh, worked with regular expressions in uh, VS Code. Uh, <laughs> uh, Dronian says, I ended up doing it by hand in the end. Yeah. Uh, and Habib says, tip, select similar text, then control D to select. Good to know. All right. What are we doing next? Back to the migration guide. So, remember what I just did where I deleted all the entity names? Remember that bit where I just did that? We did need them, actually. They go here under entity. Also, all of these should say from text, not from entity. You know what? That should be pretty easy. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's continue to do this. So instead of from entity, we want to say from underscore text. Uh, replace all of that. And then we want to replace all of this with intent and form. And I think that should work because I don't think we need to specify what the entity is if we're not... Uh, saying that we need it to be from an entity. I, I could just be making that up and we'll find out, I'm sure. So from here, it's gonna be intent, E-I-N-T-E-N-T, -E -E colon, space, inform. All right. Okay, I think this will work. I'm optimistic. Right? That looks right. So we have the name of the form, which is elicitation form. We got these all got to be indented by one. Okay, I think this is right. I did just lose my window though. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, so we have the name of the form, yeah, and then, oh, this should be one more indent here, but then the name of the slot, and then the type, and then we need the intent from from text and not the entity, because we're not saying that it's coming from an entity, uh, which allows us to be a little bit more flexible in what types of information, or what type, types of text people can put in. Uh, let's see if it works. I don't think it's gone. I think I've made a mistake somewhere, but it might. Um, so now the action should not create a form. It should create uh, two functions, the detect dialect and the uh, validate something. I don't remember what it was called. Oh, it's thinking. Don't love it. Okay. Right, nice. Okay, so we do have some issues. Um... <laughs> in line 16 class elicitation form form validation action uh name form validation action is not defined so that is what i believe it is called in the docs let's see Oh, we also need to talk about when we activate our form. Um, and then deactivate our form. And then the slot mappings. Oh, actually, let me double check that I was right about this uh, uh, from text. Da, da, da. If the intent name is done, the slot will be far filled regardless of the intent name. Okay, yeah, excellent. I was right. 
and then from intent. Okay, so we still need to go through and fix our stories, but I have uh, created some uh, difficulties for myself. <laughs> you know what it might be? I think it's probably that I just need to uh, ins update the SDK, right? Uh, hip show, it's Rasa Dash SDK? Okay, yep. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Okay, I've got the 2.0 SDK. So form validation action I just might have done bad. Form validation action class. And the form. <coughs> Excuse me. If you implement a custom validate form name, validate any extracted slots. Make sure this action is the action setting of your name. Okay, so we need to call it something else. Let's go back to our, um, I realize we're sort of jumping back and forth a little bit, but I'm not gonna be able to test anything until my actions uh, work. So, do that. So it should be called validate underscore form name. Elicitation form, I believe, is what we called it. We can check that. Uh, get rid of that. I don't think we need that anymore, actually. Elicitation underscore form. I'm just going to copy and paste just to make sure that it is exactly the same because it needs to match. Do, do, do. Okay, that looks good. Um, make sure to add this action to the action section of your domain. Let's make sure we do that. To the domain. The utterances, responses, entities, intents. Where's the actions? Responses, utter, actions. Here we go. Okay. Uh, detect tile act, pause conversation. Both of those we want. Action greet user. Doop. I don't think we actually have something called action greet user. I think that is incorrect. Okay. So now let's. First, we're gonna rouse a train. Step one, we're gonna train so that it actually work. Uh, and then step two, we're going to try when it doesn't work. Uh, all right. Intent inform line 275. Gotcha. Yep, nope, that's wrong. You're 100% right. It should, in fact, be a colon and a space. Okay, one more time. I think we fixed it now. Uh, no NLU change. We've really only changed the, the form name stuff. Um, but I guess that's part of uh, the... Not access solicitation form, as that is not a registered action for this domain. I have an inkling. I think that I'm probably supposed to add this under actions as well, perhaps. Let's see. If that fixes the problem. It might not. So I don't remember it saying anything in the docs about we needed to do that. So I might just be making this up, but it looks like based on the error message that should fix the problem. Uh, or mm, that could be coming from our story. So we may need to fix our stories first. Now I know what you're saying. You're thinking, Rachel, you're hopping back and forth between editing the action.py file and uh, updating your stories and domain. And correct, yes, I am doing that. <laughs> All right, I've got some errors. Hmm. Fall in the trace back, see where it's from. Return features, blah, 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 blah. Training trackers, train, train, batch strategy. Oh, I hope I don't have to edit the batch strategy by hand. Would prefer not to. 
Put up there, function dot pi, function. Quick execute. Invalid argument. Reshape cannot infer the missing input size for an empty tensor. Oh, that's pretty deep in there. From an input operation, input source. Ah, okay, gotcha. Okay, so I don't have anything that says uh, I'm. So this error is because I have a form defined, but I'm not actually including it in any stories correctly, I believe. Um, so let's check out our stories and see if we can fix that, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, Jose says, hey, Rachel, thanks so much for the migration guide. <laughs> I don't know if this is a guide. I used to have an actual guide on uh, on uh, the Raza blog that might be a little bit more, more helpful. Uh, I have a question. How can we handle conditional slot logic and validations in the same validation in action 2.0? What? I don't know, man. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know off the top of my head. Um, my feeling is because the validation happens after every slot right so my feeling is you'd want to do, assume that the validation happens first and keep that in a validation function and then have the conditional slot logic be handled by a rule uh, i think is probably the more 2.0e way of doing it but if that doesn't work uh i'm sorry <laughs> uh for for leaving you astray all right uh but to do Oh, excuse me. Uh, hmm. When the form is running, it will run your custom action. The custom action can extend form validation action. Runs also. In this case, you need to write functions validate. Ooh. Blah blah blah. Um, and I'm doing this using metaprogramming, so I have a a single um, a single function that generates functions of that name um, at runtime. Which, if you have a lot of slots, might cause a little bit of a um, a bottleneck when you run your action server. FYI. Following examples of the implementation of custom action, which validates. Mm -hmm. Okay, 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 okay. I think I actually might have named my uh, action bad. So it was, I see. Okay, yeah, no, I for sure did. So the name should be validate elicitation form. And then, it should be capital V, nope, <laughs> capital E, it's a capital R in validate restaurant form, and then capital F, and then it extends form validation action. All right, which we may need to import separately. Let me see if it's in the imports. Yeah, okay, uh, so it's from Raza SDK. Action tracker. Okay, so we can get rid of this because there's no longer any form action, and instead all we need is the form validation action. All right, all right, all right, all right. So let's see if that fixed our uh, actions. Sorry, I know I'm a little bit all over the place, but uh, eventually it'll work. I have complete faith. Cannot import name Treka from Raza SDK. Oh, weird. Added knee. Uh, unnecessary. <laughs> Cannot import name Track from Raza SDK. Okay, uh, so maybe it's just not there anymore. Let's get rid of it. Peace out. Uh, and I need action because I'm using it for something. I may or may not need action, we'll find out. Name tracker is not defined. I'm pretty sure this is gonna fix it. I'm pretty sure I did not add an E to track. I removed an R from tracker. Which makes more sense, because I didn't know what track was. 
Nice, okay, so that worked. Um, so I would say our actions folder is good to go. Now we just need to, well, honestly, let's just see if we can get, uh, oop, nope, wrong environment. Uh, how do you list your conda environments? List all conda environments. <laughs> Viewing a list of all your environments. It's conda info slash slash envs. Conda info. Uh, and I believe we were using Raza Fresh install too. So I'm going to deactivate and then reactivate using uh, this guy. Okay, uh, now we should have the one that I want to have, uh, and now let's try, uh, let's pop it open in the shell and see what happens. I don't know if it's going to work. We'll find out. I'm assuming this is going to take at least two hours uh, of me fussing around, uh, but we'll find out. Mm-hmm, all right. Hi, do you want to take a quiz? Your answers might be seen on the live stream. Sure, love to take a quiz. Give me up. Yeah, all right. Interesting. Hmm. Okay, so what this tells me is our form isn't running. Uh, fail to execute custom action. Which custom action? Run action, await action, run, action.py, line 636. Okay, so we're definitely going to check that out. No registered action found for elicitation form, action name, elicitation form. So I have somehow messed up elicitation form. But, but that being said, we can tell that the uh, detect dialect action, which is our machine learning, um, guesser did work and did run and we can tell that because this answer massachusetts washington alabama is what you get when all of the slots are set or when none of the slots are set right so we can tell that our uh validation action is running because if it weren't well, no, okay, the slots haven't been set. Right, everything is zero. That's what these answers are. So these are the answers that happen when um, all of the answers are set to zero. So we know, we don't know that our validation action is working. We do know that the detect dialect action is working. Um, and clearly the form isn't working and something is uh, messed up. So 636 is where we're having the issues in here. I don't think this file is that long. Maybe it is. Yeah, no, it for sure is not. Okay, so I think the problem is with the form. Um, so it says, that the, but the thing I was looking at here uh, was it had in actions.py, uh, there was an error in line 636, but there is no line 636, right? So I don't know what's up with that. In the pause conversation is the last one. Hit top three. This one's working. We know that the classifier pipeline is working because detect dialect runs, and uh, that is a dependency of. Um, uh, so detect dialect won't run as long if the classifier pipeline doesn't happen. Basically, is what that is. Um, mm. Maybe it's this submit, because in here we're doing the validation. I think we might not need to do the submit. So let's remove that and see what happens. We can always put it back in later. Mm -hmm. Trying to unpickle. This might lead to blah, 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 user warning. Um, we tried repickling last month at some point. It, it should be fine. Um, so let's try 
rerunning the action server. It keeps reactivating uh, Honda info. It keeps uh, reactivating a different Honda environment. I'm not entirely sure why. I might at some point have set it as the default somewhere and not remember doing it. Very possible. Sounds like me. Um, Conda activate. 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 Active, active. That looks right. Ugh. For those of you who have not uh, tuned into many of these, I am uh, fresh Raza install underscore two. I am dyslexic, which makes coding interesting. Fresh Raza. Fresh Raza. Okay, I think we're good to go. Uh, Raza run actions. Let's see what happens. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we've got three actions. Sorry, we have three functions, detect dialect, pause conversation, and validate a listenation form. We're not using pause conversation right now. Um, that is a way to um, stop the conversation if someone uses abusive language uh, that we are not using just at the moment. Let's just restart the Raza shell. Speaking of dyslexic, I genuinely cannot tell the difference between the slashes and it is a source of nothing but frustration for me. Da -da -da -da. It's gonna take just a second and then we'll see if we fix the problem. All right. Hi. Uh, yes, I'd love to take a quiz. I think it's not gonna work again. Yeah, okay, so the detect dialect is working. This one is not. Okay, so we have the problem, no registered action found for elicitation form, action name, elicitation form. Okay, so let's head to the domain. Maybe it shouldn't be in actions. Maybe it should only be in forms. Maybe that's our issue. Oh, actually, we can just do the shell. It just won't run the form, but we'll get a different error. Do I have any more teams? I do. Ha <laughs> hmm. ha. I was so sure that it would uh, be gone, and it wasn't. All right. Let's see what errors we get. Yeah, same errors, interesting. Uh, and now because the action server isn't running, we don't get our results back because the detect dialect action doesn't run to uh, generate the detect dialect slot. Hmm, mm, mm. Uh, Faisal says, don't forget to train it last, like last time. Oh, right, I didn't train it, did I? Is that the right one? There weren't. And we did update the stories um, using the story conversion. So that's why I'm thinking that we shouldn't need to mess with them super much. I not access solicitation form as that name is not a registered action for this domain. Mm. <laughs> uh, Marcus says, show Python code if you want help, you're only showing YAML. Yeah, so the, the conversion process 
you shouldn't need to um, edit a whole bunch of Python code. It should mostly be YAML updates. Uh, action elicitation form. So does it need to be, let's pull open the form action. I think that'll be more helpful. Okay, so this is what the form is supposed to look like, and we've got it to that section. Um, if you ran it to convert the stories, you'll have a story that handles form activation and deactivation like this, yes. And we have form in the name, right? Elicitation underscore, yep, elicitation underscore form. And then in the domain, elicitation underscore form. Yeah, that's the same. So pop that open and it has the name of the form and the forms, which it Y'all see the error now? I see the error now. This should not be a dash. All right, let's see if that fixed it. That would be great if it was just like a uh if it was a silly uh <laughs> a silly YAML error, uh I would be delighted if that was the fix. Did I retrain it? I did not, did I? Oh, I did, okay, this is the training. I didn't remember if I just hit train or shell. All right. Do y'all say epic, like rhymes with E-P-I-C or uh, APOC? I think my instinct is to say APOC rather than epic. I also heard epoch. All right, core model updated. Marco says, everyone loves YAML because of that white space and hyphen issue. Smiley. Yeah. Uh, Raza shell. We'll launch it in the shell. Yeah. Uh, but it does have, you know, it does have benefits over, over Markdown. And we had, uh, when we quizzed the community about whether or not they preferred YAML or, or um, Markdown for this particular... Um, for this particular uh, use case, the overwhelming majority of people were like, YAML, please. And that's what we got. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's see if we can take this quiz. Mm -hmm. Great, 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 great. All right, that wasn't the issue. Beans. <laughs> I thought for sure that would be the issue. Okay. The above exception was the direct cause of the following issue. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, so we don't need to actually worry about all that stuff. We can focus on this stuff. Connect call. Oh, this is new. This is new. All right, all right, all right. So it's not at 5055. I think that's right. I think it should be at 5005. One sec. Let me... <laughs> in our config uh, endpoints yeah okay so i'm going to change this to localhost so there is uh There is a problem with Windows 7 and above, I believe, where localhost takes a little bit longer to resolve than just pointing it straight at the, um, the URL. But I think that our bot is not launching at the expected, um, the, the URL like hard coded in. So I think we can fix this. Oh, I think I actually, I think I need to relaunch, but I think we can fix this. Uh, Control C, there we go. Um, and let's just retrain real quick. Uh, Faisa says, you're gonna end without fixing it. That's it. Yeah, probably. But um, if you've looked at the scheduled videos for this week, Friday is the same thing. I expected it to take about two live streams. We might need more than two, we'll find out. Uh, using action event action name is deprecated. Using action of action deactivate Form is deprecated. Please use action deactivate loop instead. Uh, will be removed. Okay, so we should be good. This is a future warning. Um, Intel Raza 3.0, and we can deal with that later. Right now, I just want to see if we can get it working, you know? 
right, so let's see if we don't have an action server running, so we're not going to be able to validate anything, and we're not going to be able to actually run the um, mm, data detection, dialect detection thing. Uh, but I'm hopeful that we'll be able to actually launch the form. If we can do that, we know that we did it right. Let's find out. Oh, uh, Marco says that I should still say what the port is. I don't know what the do. Yeah, okay. Um I still need to say what the the port is. I was just waiting to see what happened. Um Let's do that. Do I need to retrain? I don't think so, actually. I think that's just going to be accessed when, uh, da, 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 da. uh, conda activate port 80 by default. Uh, at beans. I'm gonna make sure I have the uh, activate right environment. Was was it fresh Raza install underscore two? I think so. Raza install underscore two. Uh, Raza run action. So this is gonna run the action server. <laughs> and oh, okay. So this is actually on five zero five five. Okay, I'm gonna save this, and now I'm gonna start uh, a Raza server. Yeah, and this is the, the endpoint you want the action server to be on. So we'll see if it works. I don't think it's going to. I think we have more issues to fix. Someone says, in the endpoint.yaml file, you have to mention the port. Yeah, I did eventually figure that out, but thank you. There's a little bit of delay between uh, me and the stream. <sighs> This might actually work. Let's see if we can take the take the quiz. Uh, so I'm just going to go through and answer all the questions. So our form is fixed. We do need to go back and um, update the domain file to address the warning that we got. Um, so the submit action is now deprecated and will be removed in 3.0. Uh, are y'all ready to go? Get more coffee? God, I want more coffee. Uh, yeah, okay. Cotton caught different. Sorry, this is caught and this is caught. Caught, you see one caught like, eh. Uh, don't have a word for this. We'll see. I am, so the form is working, which is great. Let's see if the detect dialect action really runs uh, and that the form validation is working. That's going to be the tricky bit. Uh, so that's a crawfish. And also we need to like, we still got more updating to do. We got to run our tests and make sure those are good. We need to um, merge back to master. Um, sorry, we need to merge back to the main branch and, you know, get rid of this one. <laughs> Marco Dice says rainbow. Yeah, I'm pretty happy. Uh, no name for this. One of my friends from Connecticut calls it gate night. I have no name for it. Gate like, wait, wait in the fence that opens oh sorry this is gate that's oh, door this would be gate i don't know it's my american sign language is getting worst uh uh so what happened here is that this was identified with the uh uh i don't know anyway i should have turned it turned debug on uh but the um This was identified as not the inform intent, so it took the action that it should take when whatever intent that that was, probably thank you. Uh, and then the form is like, I don't know what's happening. So I had to go back and uh, redo that. So we, we clearly have some work to do on the stories handling uh, digressions in the middle of the form. Not a sub. 
Poor Hoagie. <laughs> Stallone says, it's alive. Yeah. Yeah. It is indeed. Uh, Marcus says, I don't have a word for it. Yep. That's an access road. And these are, so these words and phrases are all um, picked from the Harvard Dialect Survey to be particularly different between regions. So there's going to be a lot of uh, tennis shoes. Uh, there's going to be a lot of disagreement between people about what they would say here. Tortilla. For the, uh, the, the long sandwich. Not what I would call that. It's a highway. Mm -hmm, highway. Uh, you got it. So this is what the bot does. It get, it's a dialect quiz. <laughs> that's that's the whole thing. Uh, rubbernecking. Actually, I've said rubbernecking every time I filled out this quiz. I don't think that's what I call it. I think I say that the people are rubberneckers, but I don't have like a word for the traffic jam. Uh, frosting, if you can spread it. Icing is sort of like more dribbly. Like a glaze would be icing. Lawyer, boy. I have to say it every time. Kitty corner? Or catawampus, but I know for a fact that's not in the training dialect. There is, um, that is something that has been attested in some dialectal surveys. It is pretty old and seems to be specific to the, the Tidewater region of Virginia. Uh, and I almost certainly got that from my grandpa, who was, uh, uh, grew up in, in Norfolk and um, actually went to Old Dominion when it was still part of William and Mary, which is where I went to college. Fascinating digression. <laughs> uh, Firefly. Also, this uh, this form is the lightning bug form, which is the, the one that's more common in the South, I think is um, getting a little bit less, less common. Burge. Converse shoes. You'd wear those for athletics. Ooh. You shouldn't. That's a brew through. There was, um, it's so like Virginia Beach and that sort of area. And the Outer Banks was a big, like, vacation spot where I went to high school. So people would come back with the, like, the brew through t shirts. It has, like, it's like a guy wearing, like, a red flat cap and he's got a big nose and he's always got, like, you know, board shorts on and a drink and he's having a great time. Anyway, that's, that's what I associate with that uh, water fountain. I have never been to a brew through actually. We didn't really go on vacations. That's, that's the thing about farm. You can't really leave. leave. You gotta be there. Hey! <laughs> uh, all right, so it's working. Um, here's all my answers. And uh, here is the classifier and it worked. Um, and this is something. So uh, the top answer is Virginia, which is where I'm from. So fantastic. Uh, followed by Washington State, which is where I currently live. And Michigan, um, which is actually where my mom was born in Michigan. So I don't think I've gotten that like particular cluster of answers before when taking the quiz, but um, it makes sense. Yeah, because Missouri is M.O. That's where she spent most of her time, but she was born in Michigan, and that's uh, her her dad grew up in Michigan, I believe. Yeah. Uh, Marco says, you're from Virginia? Glass or cup? Uh, I think, so, um, one of my professors in, in undergrad, Ann Reed, who I think has since retired, she was the head of the linguistics department, had like this long uh, lecture about glasses and cups. So I would say that like a glass has to be clear and a cup has to have a handle, right? It has to have like a little handle, but I wouldn't call this a cup, you know, like I'd say tea cup, I'd never say tea glass, but it has to be like small and have like a little handle and be cute, but like, I wouldn't say get me a cup of water, you know, I'd say like, get me a glass of water. Anyway, that's my, uh, I think, uh, Marcus says, I pour into the glass before I, I drink it. Yeah. So I think I'd say glass cup means something, but I can only use it for like tin cup. I would never say something made out of tin is a glass. So like the little ones that are like made out of metal and have like a little handle, you can use them for like scooping up out of a jug or something. All right. Well, I think that this is actually much more successful and faster than I thought it was going to be. Um, we do have some more work to do. We got to run our tests. Uh, so I'm going to pull up more, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, plastic cup is a glass from plastic. 
Yeah, oh, that's a good point. I wouldn't say like solo glass. <laughs> Even if it was see-through, I'd say a solo cup. But I think that that also is like a phrase for me. And I think that's what they call it. But if you gave me like, you know, those like little ones for like the little paper ones. And then they have like the handles that are like next to them and you fold them back. I call that a cup. Anyway, it's an electology. Uh, and Marco says, does it uh, do international areas at some point? Yeah, um, it's a great question. So way back in the beginning when we were scoping this project, we were like, that would be a great thing to do. The thing is, I don't have, so the data for this is uh, provided by Vertbox and is from the Harvard Dialects Survey and uh, is specifically for dialects of the United States. And we don't have, I don't have access to a good data set that I know of right now for, you know, world English, uh, world Englishes, which is sort of like a term that means English used by all uh, second language speakers of English, basically. Um, and I think that could be really interesting. And we also don't have like, I mean, thinking about like major dialect regions that I want to do a quiz like within that region, um, I think like, well, Oceania generally, because um, there's differences between Australia and New Zealand, but there's less work on sort of like regional differences in Australia and New Zealand. And it seems to be, they seem to be like more cohesive as dialects than, than the United States in part because of like settlement patterns um, in English, I will say in terms of, you know, the, the languages that were spoken there before the colonization happens, there's a lot of, you know, richness and depth and complexity, um, far more than there are English speakers in the United States. Um, uh, you know, Canada, um, Britain, um, there's a lot of places in Africa where, where English is used as sort of a, you know, lingua franca that a lot of people will, will use. Um, uh, Singapore, big English speaking community, native English speakers there. Um, yeah, so I'd want to have like a quiz for each of the major like regions um, to like have good coverage. I don't know, but that's like, that's like several dissertations worth of work to be able to have a, a you know, a quiz in this format that would work really well. Um, yeah, anyway, that's just sort of I would love to have that. It's going to take take a minute. Um, so next thing we need to do is resolve future warnings. Uh, update forms. Five. So that's done. Uh, and update the requirements. We also need to lint. So we use uh, black for, for linting at Raza, so I need to run it through black um, and then run my tests and then move, merge back with main. So we're, we've got these things left to do and I think we might actually be able to get them done next week. So that would be what, four hours total, including my uh, just off the rails digressions. Anyway, um, at least Eastern European, Western European, English, African, Asian dialects uh, common in that area. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'd love to, I'd love to expand this quiz. I think what would be more interesting than like, here's the different ways of doing it in English would be like, you know, a Spanish one or like a French one or, um, language varieties of China one. <laughs> I don't want to, uh, take a firm stance on, on language for style like there. Um, or, you know, other other similar things or like um polynesian languages would be a good one because polynesian languages tend to have like a fair amount of like overlapping vocabulary but then at that point it's like a language detector and people are like yeah duh i speak tongue and you know i don't know lots to think about uh <laughs> Faisa says don't forget the form action from custom action uh and why not use translation, keeping some part of semantic similarities alone? So particularly for something like this, where the dialect differences are 
not necessarily going to be equally represented in the training data. Using translation like that is going to um, introduce a lot of noise. Uh, and so the entire reason that we're doing this as a dialect quiz, this dialect quiz is like a chatbot in the first place, is because it allows people to answer, enter in any answers. And then behind the scenes, we sort of figure out what's going to be most likely for them. Um, but like the the data collection behind this and the question writing and sort of my annotation of the questions has really been focused on being linguistically you know good practices and <laughs> running things through machine translation i would say in terms of uh, linguistics particularly for dialect features is not going to work very well um right now maybe someday it will uh but probably not super soon so um yeah and i think i have a on the YouTube channel, I have a video on multilingual NLP and non-English NLP, and I talk a little bit about why you can't just translate there. Um, yeah. So this was a very successful stream. Uh, Friday, we're going to come back. We're going to check out these future warnings. We're going to work them, make better. <laughs> uh, yeah, we should be done with our, ambitiously, I'm going to say we're going to be done with our migration on Friday. We'll see. Um Tomorrow we're going to continue working on the paper reading group. Uh, so it's a ooh, it's a big paper, um, lots going on. Uh, but really, it talks about when you are working on modeling conversations and when you're looking at conversational data, um, the the things to consider around you know the speaker's emotionally state and how you would model that and shared information how you model that so it's, it's a pretty rich paper um me and emma will be working on that uh also every day this week including i believe saturday we're gonna have a new episode of the season three uh breakout bot coming out so if you're interested in seeing um a more <laughs> polished version of bot development i'd really recommend that um and that's with vincent um, and also today we have a podcast episode coming out. Uh, the podcast is called Raza Chats. I upload it onto um, YouTube, but it's also available um, on a lot of major podcasting platforms. It's sort of like slowly rolling out as we get approved. Um, and we're going to be talking, I'm talking with a um, developer who is the lead developer on um, a, a chatbot that's designed to help people experiencing homelessness in uh, Canada and talking about a lot of the design considerations and uh, how to best serve that type of population and why use a chatbot in the first place. And um, yeah, it's a really good episode. I'm excited to share it with you. Uh, and I think that's all we have this week. That's enough, right? <laughs> that's plenty of things. So I will be back tomorrow with our paper reading group. And I hope to see you there.